right up there in some of those games up against the Springboks. So we've got to go out there. Argentina can match the pace of the Wallabies because the Wallabies' pace is a lot faster pace than what New Zealand pays it with. The Wallabies' offload game is going to be something that will really just absolutely drain the gas tank of Argentina because of the fact of we saw it even up against the Springboks. When you offload that ball about three times in one phase and you never let the Springboks get an opportunity to go to the ground, I believe the Springboks missed around 21 tackles in their match up against the Wallabies. But then it kept on ending up with Marika Korompiti out on one wing, Lena Katow in the midfield, and it was always forwards who had to try and counter them in terms of trying to shut them down. The likes of a Mostert out on the wing ended up marking up with Marika Korompiti, which we all know who is going to be winning that foot race. So I think the Wallabies need to do what they did up against the Springboks because of the fact that the rugby championship really is on the line for the Wallabies. They are probably the side here and the Springboks those two are the ones who are fighting for second place at the moment in terms of who finishes just oh, that little aren't bit playing higher. No, mm. Argentina, Argentina are done. Argentina aren't playing for yeah. second. So I it think is only mathematically be... they probably could, couldn't they? But they're not going to. No, they are, they are pretty much dead and buried here, Argentina. But the teams that I mentioned, the Wallabies and the Springboks are the two fighting for second. Yeah. And in that regard, it is going to be whoever makes the most of the opportunities. The Wallabies theoretically need to make up one point at some stage in the near future if they do want a chance of even if the Springboks lose one of their games, they still have a chance of being able to finish second if they win their second comfortably. So the Wallabies, they need to increase that points differential and continue to keep on pushing themselves up a little bit more because that second game up against the All Blacks was one that really cost them quite a few extra points. Or actually, sorry, the second game. Of the so going three. back to my question, do you think that Argentina will be able to cope with the Australian pace? No, but I'm hoping they will be able to throw a little bit something different with the fact that they have got those younger players in their back line. And also, they just, like I mentioned, they've got nothing to lose. Like you're already saying that they're a terrible <laughs> side in this rugby championship. So I they just need to go out there and try and prove their, though. like I'm kind not, of prove themselves. I'm not saying they're terrible. They're still better than a lot of other teams. Like, there's, no, there's still a reason why they're seventh, but... Like I said last week, man, I could see Argentina drop into 11th, and that's very, very low for this kind of caliber team. I don't think that they're going to drop below Georgia by any means into 12th, and that's why I kind of bit back at the Fiji versus Georgia thing, because it's like Fiji in 11th and Georgia in 12th, there is actually a polar separation between the top 11 and those Georgia and Italy kind of teams, and that's why I was just like, well, that's a bit crazy. But for me, I think Argentina could drop down there, or even 10th, if you want to put Japan or Fiji into that 11th spot. It doesn't really matter, or even potentially Scotland but I'm a bit more higher on Scotland than most people are right now. But Argentina, I don't think they know what pace they want to do right now. I don't know if they really know the tactics they want to use. They're not the same gritty, grindy team they once were. Defensively, they're still pretty sound. Don't get me wrong. But you can't win a game solely on defense. Defense wins championships and defense wins games. But defense isn't going to score you tries. You know, and that's the thing with Argentina. Like, you, defense will win you a championship. And look at that, that's how South Africa play. They're very good defensively, but they're also very good attacking wise. And that's why that's why they won the 2019 World Cup. But Argentina, I just don't see their tactics right now. I don't see the tactics. I don't. I don't really know what their ultimate game is besides just defending their line the whole time. And when you're looking at when, when you've got an upcoming team like the Wallabies, who just absolutely annihilated the South Africans on pace. Like, yes, Australia might not be ready yet for the consistency. Like, that's the only worry that I have. That's the only worry that I have this week. I'm not worried about Argentina specifically. I'm worried about the pace, um, about the consistency, sorry. I'm worried about the consistency of Australia and if they're going to go back to a pre-South Africa form and they're not going to utilize this positivity right now. But then again, I'm, I'm scared for the likes of Samuel Correvi running at this Argentinian de- defense over and over and over and over again when you've got the likes of Conor Betty there and you've got the likes of, um, you know, Kellaway who are just speedsters and, and just pacing and just continuously going and then Quade Cooper who's always moving and grooving like I know that New Zealand is the better team overall but they don't utilize just consistent passing 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 like with New Zealand right they pass it short and run through the forwards and just bang forward bang forward bang forward and it gives time for you to actually like they're structurally better but it gives time for the other team to to get us a tad bit of a breather but with the Wallabies man they just get the ball out and they're just continuously throwing it they don't go to the rolling malls which give you time to take a breather outside of the mall you know, it's just, I don't know. I think the biggest thing for Argentina is getting those rolling malls going like South Africa killed Australia with the first game. But then you go and have a look at the second game and Australia killed South Africa on the defensive rolling uh, rolling malls and, and everything like that. It was just such an improved performance. So look, it, for me, and would you disagree with this, do you think the only problem for Australia could be the consistency or do you think that Argentina could actually genuinely match up and beat them? I have a slight feeling they may risk Karevi for this game 
if really? I'm being completely honest. I think Hunter Pai Sami must be close to being able to return. So I'm wondering whether or not they decide to give him a run, but then saying that Lenikatel scored himself two tries because Karevi in the last two matches, I believe he's had something like 40-something carries in just the last two matches. So surely that man, after just hitting the ball up constantly, if they don't rest him this game, I think they'll rest him for the next one just so that he's a little bit fresher heading into some of those like later year games because you don't want to have him as an injured player because I think he's completely changed that back line for Absolutely. the Wallabies. Having a number 12 like Karevi rather than a Matt Tamua Whereas Tamua would probably more than likely pass it on the outside and make Paisami or Ikatel take the contact, uh, contact. Whereas Garevi, he'll just keep on running the ball. He'll get up, he'll get smashed, he'll get up, he'll get smashed, and he'll just keep on going and going and going for 20-plus phases throughout the match. And he finds that offload. I mentioned it in the live stream as well. That sevens offload, kind of that style of offload there to Pete Samu, I believe it was, that then opened up the opportunity for the attacking move yeah. from the Wallabies. So... If they can somehow keep this consistently uh, kind of going right through the end of year tour, like we mentioned a little bit earlier on, they could still have this number three spot. But it's that just big, uh, big question of if they can, because we've seen it in the past. They have a couple of good games, but then unfortunately the trend kind of continues to kind of make it. That's what I'm saying about consistency, man. That's what I'm saying about consistency. That is literally what I'm saying about consistency. If Australia can maintain what's going on right now. But if they rest Sam McCarrabi, I'm still fine with that. It's not like he's going to be the only be all and end all of winning us this game. But honestly, I would, I, I, we've kind of hijacked this Argentinian talk with Australia. Uh, but I guess it kind of is what's going to happen in the rugby championship when they're about to play this week. So you look at this game against New Zealand and you think, for me, it wasn't good enough. For you, you said that it was good enough.